So there is no better person really in Australia to speak about the subject of uh, landscape and photography and to formally launch this exhibition and book than Dr Bob Brown. Bob is a former Greens politician, senator and parliamentary leader of the Australian Greens. He remains, I think, Australia's best known and most influential environmentalist. In the late 70s, Bob emerged as a leader of the campaign to prevent construction of the Franklin Dam, which would have submerged the Franklin River Valley as part of a hydroelectricity project. As I said, this exhibition marks the 30 year anniversary of that very important event. And Bob was part of that event, an important part of that event. So it's a genuine pleasure. And also I've got to say, Bob's a great photographer in his own right. There's, um, there's an exhibition coming up at Mooney Valley uh, that includes landscape photographs taken by Bob. But it's a genuine pleasure for me to welcome Bob Brown to Monash Gallery of Art to open this exhibition. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, Sean, and thank, I thank the gallery. What a beautiful space. Uh, and um, Claudia for asking me to launch this photographic exhibition. I, uh, yes, I have been in Seattle and um, I'm going to Sydney, Paul and I are going to Sydney after this um, for a fundraiser for Sea Shepherd. I'll just tell you for a moment before I come back to the exhibition that the uh, mission to Seattle was to take part in a, a court case where the Japanese whale killing fleet owners are, are trying to put Sea Shepherd out of commission so that they have free reign to slaughter the, um, the, the great um, cousins of ours of the ocean, the whales. Uh, mothers in front of calves, calves in front of mothers, doesn't matter for a completely unnecessary pursuit of anything except uh, government subsidised money. And I can tell you that the court case uh, that I took part in went quite well. We were just asserting that Australia is running the uh, campaign against uh, the whale killing. It's not coming from the United States or somewhere else. This country and Sea Shepherd Australia, which I now chair, is doing that. And, uh, and what's more, if they come down this summer, we're ready. We have our three ships at Williamstown getting very ready with an international crew, including Japanese crew, and they'll be going down there to get in the way again. Um, so, that, so there we go. Claudia, I'm one of Claudia's people. Uh, she says in the wonderful interview with Sean, and I really recommend you buy this book uh, not just to see the photographs, but to read that interview. Um, that she's a romantic, and uh, so am I. And, you know, we have to somewhat feel apologetic about that these days. And why on earth, I don't know. Because all that means is that um, we have a connection with the mystery of life on this planet, uh, which so far as we know, uh, despite I was reading uh, in the Scientific American coming back across the ocean about an exploding star which, is, um, uh, which we've just witnessed in the last two years somewhere way out in space, uh, much bigger than our own sun. But here we are on this planet with life and with our awareness and now through the magic of the technology where we've converted nature's own potential, the ability to represent it as we see in Claudia's um, marvellous depictions on these walls. And we are bonded to that nature. And we're bonded to it um, because we're part of it and we have evolved out of it. Uh, and the danger is that evolving out of it uh, because in fact we are part of it. And the biosphere of this planet is quite able to carry on um, without us but not the reverse. We cannot carry on without it. And we are in very, and Claudia says this in response to Sean in that interview, uh, we have a dark future. And the, uh, it's, a, it's a future we're charting for ourselves. Uh, and while I am post politics, I'm not going to um, be a person um, who's going to be politically partisan, except just to note, that this nation has just voted to open up massive coal mines in Queensland, to have six mega coal ports inside the Great Barrier Reef, 
to reintroduce the um, mega trawlers to fish in our oceans, to mine the Tarkine wilderness in Tasmania, to remove federal environment laws and put them back to the states, and we're seeing that process just this week unfolding, to put our environmental laws back behind where they were in 1970, uh, and to have world heritage status ripped off Tasmania's forests in my home state so that they can be logged and wood chipped and sent to Japan to make electricity these days. They burn it to uh, make a bit of power, and they call that power renewable energy. That's green energy. And so we're in, indeed, and we, uh, we have to recognise this, uh, we're under a very dark future shadow. And one of the things that's going to... Oh, look, I got on the plane in LA to fly to Seattle and was a bit amazed because you know how when you get on a flight here and, and indeed when the flight's ending, they say, make sure your window blinds are fully up. Well, on the Virgin flight from Lax, Los Angeles to Seattle, when you step aboard the plane, all the blinds are firmly down. You can't see out. And that's so that you can facilitate looking at little boxes in front of you about some manufactured reality which has taken the human brain and is racing off with it in captivity. And uh, likewise across the Pacific coming back. Uh, this morning, some hours after dawn, I ventured in the cabin I was in, and I was luckily upgraded to business, and I ventured to raise my blind just a little so I could see out. Some hours later, I raised it a little bit more because we were crossing the coast of Australia, and there was Jarvis Bay, and a little bit later, all the ripples of the melting snows on the Australian Alps. I was the only one in the cabin who saw it. Every other blind was down. And not until we start descending into Melbourne and somebody on a microphone said, please lift your blinds now, we're about to land, did the blinds all go up? Until that moment, the cabin I was in was completely shut off all the way for 15 hours from the natural world. Because, and I felt antisocial in lifting the blind to have a look. <laughs> I note that uh, Claudia's got some stunning pictures um, in, from Iceland. And uh, it brought my, to mind that some years ago when I was flying elsewhere across, uh, well, that time from Glasgow to San Francisco and got a glimpse of Iceland in winter and then the skies opened up over Greenland uh, and there was our planet below with these magnificent mountains and cornices and icebergs floating off from the um, continent or the island of, of Greenland. I, I, a view you would pay hundreds of dollars to see because it's life uplifting. And somebody tapped me on the shoulder, the attendant, and said, sir, would you put your blind down? The in-flight movie's <laughs> about to start. So there is, we are in a very dangerous circumstance where we are saying to the planet, um, we've got other artifices that are disconnecting us. I like to be a romantic because a romantic is about our connection, that bond which indigenous people live by with the living planet itself. And if we have some artifice which is excruciatingly important, it's terribly important to remind us of that bond, it is the photographic, both still and movie, technology that we have these days. And um, here in this pictorial record of this remarkable eye reflecting upon a spirit in tune with the world, and Claudia's father was a romantic as well. He, he went through um, some of the darkest hours uh, we've seen and emerged from that a beautiful spirit from what I read in this interview, which has been passed through to Claudia, uh, and has met us on these walls. All I can say uh, is uh, I don't have to tell you about it. You can see it for yourself. But up the back there is a picture, this is the second from the right after that divide, of bushland in the United States. 
And what that picture does amongst the many is uh, reflect the brilliant composition but also the majesty of black and white. Were that picture in colour, the contrast between the, the wood in the foreground, the trees, and there's an ancient tree leaning out of the picture to the left and the mountains in the background could not be stated in the way it is in that picture. And these pictures are about nature itself. Everywhere they are capturing a moment in nature but of the ancient beauty of this planet as has been seen by our forebears uh, as they have moved through a landscape which they did not dominate and were able to view something of majesty which they knew was beyond themselves. The very dangerous thing about ourselves in 2013 is that our society has taken, has got taken aboard the arrogance to believe that we are beyond that landscape. And it is not just dangerous to the planet, but it is extraordinarily dangerous to this big mammal, this extraordinary mammal of seven and a half billion, which is now marauding the planet. And one of those things, Sean just mentioned the iconic picture, Rock Island Bend, of Peter Dombrovskis, who, who um, uh, came to Tasmania as a little boy and grew up with his mother who'd come from Germany. Interesting, isn't it? And saw to, to it that he had a, a, also had a small camera in his hand when he was old enough to, and, and he from there went on to become um, a brilliant photographer. Uh, we see in Claudia's own work a reverence for the planet, an incisiveness, but an ability to with herself out there in the bush, wherever it may be, capture what this planet has always been to humanity. And you can stand and look at these pictures and reflect on them and I have no doubt come back and see more. With these great, they're almost monochrome pictures here in this other room, you can walk into them. You can be there. You can hear the sounds. Claudia says that in her black and white pictures, if you look long enough, you can start to see the colours. And indeed you can. And then you can start to hear the sounds or the silence that accompanies these pictures. This is evocative fo photography, landscape photography, uh, uh, of an extraordinary and remarkable ability to lift our spirits and to strengthen or renew our kinship with this planet itself. If you look at this picture behind Greg of the ocean and the sky above it, it's all right, Colin, we can, we can see very... It, it's um, for anybody, and all of us have stood by the seashore when there's wild weather about and wondered what it is that strikes our souls about the waves coming in, the weather coming in, this infinite second which is like no other um, ever that we are witnessing. And it's encapsulated extraordinarily well. I have never seen it better encapsulated than in that single picture on that wall. It's wonderful, wonderful photography. And it's a tribute to the planet that it could produce Claudia and a, and a relationship with, well, I, there is hope for the future. And it's on these walls. And it's through love of the planet that we as a human species will go on to the, into the future. Exploit it if that's the motivating force and we're done for. Love it and we'll be okay. And on this picture, on these, on these walls is a love and reverence for this planet and a wonder at the majesty of it uh, and how we come to be here doing it. And it's here in this big metropolis for us to spend some hours with to see how it is right around the world. But there's a message in what Claudia says uh, in, in that this is transient. Some of these places, Turtle Dreaming, the last picture on the wall and which is on the cover of the book, Oh, crikey, uh, Claudia, that's, um, 
I don't, I don't want to, I know uh, comparisons are odious, but that's an Ansel Adams picture. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of the great, um, certainly black and white, one of the great photographs of nature I've ever seen. It's, it's right up there um, at the top. What a beautiful picture. What a great selection to have that on the front of the book. Uh, by the way, these photographs are available for you. Um, <laughs> and um, put that on your wall at home and uh, nobody is going to go past your home and ask, not ask, what is that, where is that? And Claudia tells me that um, it's somewhat already being degraded by weeds. And where you get weeds, you then get fire. And uh, where you get the potential for fire, you have fire. So even that beautiful landscape in the Northern Territory is threatened. Well, if we're going to change things, we can't do it from a point of view of pessimism. And I think uh, the thing, while there is a inherent thread of threat in these pictures and what we human beings are doing to it, I find them uplifting and inspiring. This is the planet that it's our job to protect. And these photographs tell us that loudly and clearly. It's not just, we're not just here to witness this, we're here to do something about it so that people 550,000 years from now will be looking at scenes like these we are enjoying here today. It's a remarkable exhibition from a globally remarkable photographer. Uh, it's a great privilege to have been asked to come along and open your exhibition. Thank you uh, for that honour. I do declare the exhibition open. I uh, also have great pleasure in launching that book. Get one, ladies and gentlemen, because um, they're, a, uh, they're an absolute um, Christmas is coming. They're a great <laughs> gift. <laughs> they're a great gift for the friend. But there's something on your shelf that's timeless. There's not too much. Uh, amongst the stuff we'll get uh, as gifts in this coming season, which is timeless, but here it is. And uh, this uh, exhibition's here until well into the new year. Um, there's the other thing, and it's open, well, I'll leave you to say that, Sean, but um, I'll be telling people to come here and have uh, a particularly, and a special moment in photography, because this is, is it. This is world's best photography in this remarkable gallery. It's a great joy to be here. I thank you for asking me and I have great pleasure in declaring this wonderful exhibition open. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, for that incredibly moving uh, uh, opening address. It's uh, it's wonderful that you're here, and I uh, I thank you so much for making your way all the way from Seattle to Sydney via Willers Hill. <laughs> Please continue to enjoy our hospitality. The lovely Montelto Pinot Grigio and Pinot Noir will be served throughout the afternoon. Um, we're actually in the middle of a visitor survey, so if you do want to um, tell us how great we are or where we might improve, please visit our website and complete our survey. It's very short, 10 minutes. Uh, very important to us to know what you think and, uh, and what you see happening and what you'd like to see happening. And there's some public programs which our public programs coordinator, Stephanie, has organised and they're listed on the wall just beside the, the bar. So please continue to enjoy the hospitality. The exhibition's open until the 19th of January, so come back and wallow in the wonder of these beautiful pictures. Thank you very much.